Hey there, Sharon Hornells from here. Welcome to day 1,532 of What You Up To Now, documenting the journey and sharing lessons that I have learned and things that I'm working on as I transitioned. Originally in 2016, I left the physical worlds of business as part of my divorce. And 2017, early 2017, I was like, okay, what am I going to do now? I'm old, so I don't really want to go do something different. What have I always been interested in and curious about? What I've always been interested in the online world, online business, the internet and things. So I decided I was going to jump in to the online world and see what the experience held for me. And it held a lot of interesting lessons learned. I learned things about FOMO, never heard of FOMO, fear of missing out, never even thought of it. I'm sure I experienced it, but I never had a name for it until I came online. I learned all kinds of different techniques, strategies, marketing things, different businesses you could start, affiliate marketing, uh, master classes, webinars, workshops, uh, summits, did some summits, uh, podcasting. I've done, I think, almost 5,500 podcast episodes now since 2018, 2019, I suppose. I 2018, I started. Okay, 2018. 1,532 episodes of just documenting my journey and sharing what I've learned and what I'm doing as I'm making this transition online. And then since COVID, a little bit of online and offline back and forth. Now, today, our idiom for supersize your business was the blind leading the blind. And I feel uniquely qualified to discuss this topic since I am legally blind. Now, I don't usually wear sunglasses because I don't think my eyes are super funky looking yet. Although my makeup's getting pretty bad. I have to, <laughs> I might have to hire somebody to someday soon do my makeup before I appear on videos, but <clears throat> I haven't like succumbed to that yet. I know some days my, my makeup's really horrible because people will see me after I do my videos and tell me that. And I'm okay with that because I keep moving forward and we have to all remember to do that. No matter what's going on in our life, each of us are faced with different challenges, different trials, and we have to decide, are we going to let those things shut us down and stop us from doing the things we want to do in our life? Or are we going to say, all right, I didn't expect this. I didn't anticipate this, but I'm going to figure out how to do it no matter what, how to do the thing I want to do in spite of all the things that are thrown my way. And the more we stretch our comfort zone and push the envelope on what we want to do, the closer we get to the things that we want to achieve in our lives, the more obstacles, more challenges, the more changes that come our way. And so for me, I guess vision is one of those challenges that I need to continually face. So Blind Leading the Blind, of course, is our, <clears throat> for the month of April, we're focusing on our spiritual well-being, our spiritual health. I don't have my life framework handy, but when we look at the life framework, there's there's seven to nine to 10 to 12, depending on the guru that you follow, aspects of our life that we want to take into consideration as we're setting our goals, as we're deciding what we want, as we're paying attention to the results that we're getting in each of those areas and aspects of our life. And we can ignore, I I say we can ignore certain areas and aspects of our life for a while, sometimes for a long time, like a couple of decades, before it catches up with us and shuts us down and says, uh, no, you need to pay attention to this. You can't continue to ignore the state of your relationship. You cannot continue to ignore <clears throat> your physical well-being, your physical health. You cannot continue to ignore your mental well-being, your spiritual well-being, your financial well-being, or it's going to wake you up. There's going to be a wake-up call or something that happens to force you to consciously pay attention to that area or aspect of your life. So in order to <clears throat> overcome some of those challenges that we fall into accidentally, I have followed Tony Robbins for, oh my God, since the late 70s, early 80s. As he first got started, I was having some health challenges. And so it gave me a lot of time in, to learn about personal development things early on. And then <clears throat> I got better physically and, and mentally, finished college, got a job, joined corporate America and started having businesses on the side. So corporate America and businesses was kind of my, my trail through life thus far. Although I, I left corporate America in 2004, I think my last job, I left 2004, 2003, 2004, uh, because my businesses were making a lot more money and were a lot more fun. And I had a lot more freedom with my young family in. And so it was time to make that decision and say, okay, I don't need to do both anymore. I want to just work on my own businesses. <clears throat> and then following my divorce, I had the opportunity to come online. 
So blind leading the blind today, love this expression. I shared nine different blind spots that we as leaders and business owners and just as human beings want to watch out for as we're moving through our life. Things that can uh, harm us mostly or harm other people because we're not paying attention. So if we're trying to create something or lead something or make a better life for ourselves, if we have these blind spots and don't see them or you know address them eventually, they can actually shut us down. They can prevent us from getting the things that we want in our life. So I shared those on Supersize Your Business. Today was day 100 already, already day 100 of our annual challenge this year. It's called the BU 365 Day Challenge. You do one thing every day that improves us. And again, the month of April, we're focusing on our spiritual well-being. And today we talked about shoulds. Now, I was a person that lived all of my life in the should zone until I was 50, right? Literally, until I was 50 and had a sudden cardiac arrest. I spent my whole life doing all of the things that I should do to be a good business owner, that I should do to be a good corporate executive, that I should do to be a good mom, that I should do to be a good wife, that I should do everything for other people and not for myself. And I think that was part of what led to the sudden cardiac arrest was I should have been taking care of myself and physically doing things like eating right, not consuming tons of diet soda and coffee and living on that and jalapeno chips and some sugar that was pretty much it. I figured the formaldehyde that I had consumed over the previous two decades is part of what preserved me and helped me make it through the sudden cardiac arrest experience where most people don't. So I <clears throat> uh, lived a lot of my life in shoulds and that event gave me and myself permission to say, whoa, I need to rethink this. I need to do something different. And that that is definitely a pivotal turning point in my life. And and. I continue to say it's our it's our bad experiences, it's the negative things that happen to us in our life that are so painful at the time that they cause us to change and make dramatic changes in our own best interests generally uh, in order to create the life that we want. And that that's definitely the primary pivotal event of my life that forced me to change to become more aligned with who I really needed to be, not who other people thought I should be, right? Not who my parents thought, not who my ex-husband thought I should be, not who even my kids thought I should be. So do do some of them disagree with, with who I am now? Absolutely, positively. Uh, but I'm a lot happier with it. And that's what really matters the most. So we talked about uh, different things and, and what what is it that we should do? And, and not what someone else told us we should do, but what do we think our shoulds are. So that's what we examined today on the annual challenge for day 100. I think it's a great day 100 activity to say, okay, these are all the things. And, and it only takes a couple of seconds to sit down and write a couple of things down. I should do this. I should do that. I should do this. I should do that. And then look at that list and say, okay, well, I know that that's not my should for myself. That's just what I've been told my whole life. I should, and we were talking about it with respect to spiritual well-being. I should go to church every Sunday. I should go to confession every Saturday. I should tithe to my religion, etc. Those are all things we're told we should do, but what feels right for us? I contribute a whole lot more than 10% of my income, not to my church, but to other things and other groups and other uh, causes that are important to me, that feel good to me and feel right to me. And those have changed over time too, uh, based on what I've learned about how things really work in certain industries and certain aspects and what's what makes me feel good about making the world a better place. Um, so what should you do? What in your mind, your opinion, because that's the only one that matters, should you be doing with your time more than anything, with your money, with your life, with the resources that you have at hand, with your energy, right? I think time and energy are our most valuable resources and I don't know if people would say, no, money is the most important thing or whatever. It's, it's up to each of us to decide. All right, that's all I've got today. Uh, it's Sunday in my neck of the woods, so I'm going to have a family day. Yesterday we went to the zoo, which I, with my um, youngest granddaughter, she's 14 months old, and so it was fun to take her to the zoo for the first time. You know, with COVID and everything, stuff has been so shut down. It was really funny because my daughter and son-in-law and my granddaughter and I all went to the zoo. And... They were complaining about how there were so many people. 
how crowded and how hot it was and things. And I was kind of laughing because the tropical area, it's very hot. I agree. But I wasn't hot for some reason because I'm always cold. And they were complaining about all the people and how busy it was. And I'm like, you guys, this is what the zoo was. I've never been to the zoo with this few people. And so I actually really enjoyed it. And so it was fun to see my granddaughter and the animals and everything. And I love to have those experiences. So weekends are for fun. Weekends are for uh, spending time with family and doing the things that recharge our batteries. At least for me, they are these days. All right. Any questions, anything I can help you with, please ask. I know that one of my biggest frustrations in the past was feeling like I was all alone as I was building and growing some of my businesses and, and thinking, all right, I'm, I've got this quandary, I've researched it, but I still don't feel confident in knowing exactly what to do. If I only had one confident, and I did have a couple of friends that I would bounce ideas off of that were also business owners in different businesses and different industries, but it gave me that, uh, that resource that I could tap into. But a lot of people don't have that, especially as we're growing and building our businesses and going from stage to stage to stage. So I like to, when I have time and energy, offer up, you know, Voxer me, pajama grandma on Voxer. And if you want to know the reason for that name, go ahead and ask. Uh, uh, or just Google Sharon Hornelstrom. You can find me pretty much anywhere on social media if we're not directly connected yet. And just ask. I mean, in less than five minutes, I guarantee we can help you clarify and know what you need to do next. Not what do you need to do for everything to supersize your business. Although you can go to the Supersize Your Business private group and there's a game on the front of that group page that you can go through to learn all the steps you need to do to supersize and grow your business. All right. Have an awesome day. And I will, of course, be with you tomorrow.